of traffic and the nearby rattle of demolition. Every day through seven full moons, a quarter of a million people have been driving on the new bridge and watching the demolition of the old East Span. The first phase of demolition involves the dismantling of 50 million pounds of steel in the cantilever section and another 15 million pounds in the S-curve. After seven months of work, the most frequent question from the public is why doesn't the state just blow up the old bridge? Well, that's a great question. If this was a time maybe back when the bridge was built, it would come down by explosive means. But part of the large effort for the department at this point is to make sure that we don't impact the bay. The bridge is covered in lead paint and dropping 65 million pounds, just the first phase of the bridge, into the bay is not going to happen. Dropping things into the bay is, uh, is just not environmentally conceivable at this point. So we're taking it apart in the reverse order and we're using debris containment systems to make sure that we don't drop anything into the bay. Dismantling the bridge is tricky too. A marvel of reverse engineering, since engineers must know exactly how much each piece weighs. You know, we have a model that has the weight of all these members, and it's been estimated based on the original plan. Uh, over the years, things have been added to the bridge. Most notably, the paint that's put on the bridge is about 50% solids. That's a really high solids ratio for paint. And as the paint thicknesses build up over the years, um, members get a lot heavier. And another point to bring out here, Mark, is that when you do demolition and you rig a crane up to take a load of a member you're going to cut, it really pays to know what that weight is because when the last cut is made, the crane takes all that weight as soon as the cut's made. That's a little bit unique to demolition because if we were building it and we wanted to lift something that turned out to be heavier than we thought, we could stop. But in demolition, you can't do that. So it's really critical to know what the weights are. It's a painstaking process. Before cutting into steel, in some places workers have to climb into sections to hand remove rivets. It's hot and loud and time consuming. Supporting the shifting weight means constantly readjusting jacks. There's areas where um, there's tension members and areas where there's compression members. And when you cut a member, you don't want to have any stress in it uh, because that can cause uh, a rapid release of energy and uh, maybe an unpredictable moment. You don't want that to happen. So, for instance, if a member has a lot of tension in it, what you do is you put detensioning devices on each side of where you're going to cut. You jack those detensioning devices together a little bit, which relieves the stress in the member. Then you make a cut and the whole process is very controlled. 600 feet of the suspension span is now gone, rekindling memories of the bridge's construction. This was the East Span in March of 1936. The reverse engineered gap returned in May of 2014. The western section of the cantilever is now an island unto itself, getting smaller every day as it inches towards that growing 600 foot gap. Crews take an elevator to the precipice, debris is hoisted down. CBC Silverado, a joint venture, will have the S-curve down in 2015. You have to have enough of the S-curve gone so we can also build the, the eastbound on-ramp, the new eastbound on-ramp. And remember that the bike path is cantilever, cantilevered off that new eastbound on-ramp. So, that whole thing, which is essentially another new bridge attaching to the larger new bridge, has to be constructed before bikes can get to the island. The first phase of the three-phase demolition is on schedule as history repeats itself in reverse order. On the Old East Span, Mark Jones reporting.